Becca Brunstetter is the book writer of the musical The Notebook on Broadway. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Becca, this show is, uh, the story that the show is based on is so beloved by so many people in the novel form and the film. What about it most resonated with you personally and made you want to take on the task of adapting it to the stage? Oh man, well, me, like so many people, I have Alzheimer's in my family. I have a lot of it actually. Um, the genetic kind that tends to kind of just trickle down through generations. Um, my grandfather had it. Um, he was actually alive when I signed on to this and it really felt like a way to honor him. Um, and he actually passed away when we were doing it in Chicago. Um, and, you know, so many people have someone in their life who have has had Alzheimer's or some form of dementia, you know, Parkinson's. Um, and for me, with my grandfather, the thing that was so beautiful, um, even when he was, you know, slipping away from us, is that he kind of maintained his sense of humor and his love of life. And um, I just saw an opportunity to um, honor the experience of the disease, but also sort of like provide some hope and, and uplift because while the story is incredibly sad, it's also a beautiful story of the most universal human thing, which is love and, and love um, staying strong until these two people die. And so I just felt like I, I had to do it to, to honor my family members and to just put something, try and put something good into the world. It's a beautiful sentiment. Um, and we'll talk about how the show balances its tone so well, but you know, audiences do come in expecting a tearjerker and it is certainly mm -hmm. a tearjerker. And you have experience as a writer and producer on This Is Us, which is an incredible tearjerker. Um, did that, mm -hmm. you know, did that experience writing for that show, writing about family drama and mm -hmm. such an emotionally honest and vulnerable show help you, you know, when you were approaching um, this adaptation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but even before This Is Us, um, the the work that I gravitate to and the stories I like to tell have that funny, sad thing going on because for me, like the biggest laughs I've ever had in my life are during the have been during the most devastating times of my life. And the two things just kind of exist together. Um, so I was so lucky to get to write for This Is Us because that's where I love to live as a writer anyway. So yeah, but absolutely, you know, all of the work we did on this is us navigating the different timelines certainly helped me figure out um, the the bones of this show for sure. Yeah, one of the biggest, I guess you would say, you know, changes to existing, you know, like the film, for example, is that we have uh, three versions of Noah and Allie, yeah. which I think um, exists in the film. Um, I hadn't seen it in a very long time, but- yeah. um, you know, that's that's a really big decision that I think works incredibly well. Um, I love seeing, you know, three different performers perform the character at three different moments in time. What was the inspiration for going from a kind of younger and older to a younger middle and older, which I think yeah. so well? Well, in the book and, and also the movie a little bit more clearly, um, there are three timelines. So you do, you know, you see them when they're 17, late twenties and then at the end of their lives. So that was kind of already true. And we just saw an opportunity um, to use three actors for each, use an actor for each timeline um, that would that would really make it a piece of theater, you know, and, and sort of explode uh, the ways in which we could tell the story and layer the timelines on top of each other. And, you know, for Ingrid have you know, older Noah harmonizing with with two of his younger selves. It just it just felt really exciting to us, and really we really wanted to make a piece of theater and not just slap the movie on stage. So that decision really uh, enabled us to make something different that also honored the source material, and it just um it it felt like also a way to just underline one of the big themes of the show, which is time. Again, the most universal human thing that we all don't know how much time we have on earth and what are we gonna do at that time? And are we gonna choose love and fight for the people we love and all of that? Um, you know, by having three different actors play one person, you do sort of get to, without even really talking about it, examine how we change as we get older, but also how we stay the same. So that was really 
exciting to us to try. Yeah, it, it works so well. Um, and we're talking now about the process of taking this book and film and, and translating it to the stage, which I have to imagine when you're working with, you know, a property that's so beloved is a, a yeah. huge task. So what, you know, yeah. what was your way into it? I mean, obviously, as you mm -hmm. said, it, the story resonates with you so deeply, but what, what was the process of starting to say, okay, how am I going to get this on the page in a unique way that's, as you said, too, you know, perfectly tailored to a stage adaptation versus, you know, yeah. the games it's been in? Well, Ingrid and I both obviously love the movie and, and you know, we love the book. Um, so we were already fans. Um, but early days when we were trying to figure out what the theatrical language was going to be, why people were singing, when they were singing, how the story is going to unfold. We really kind of put the book and the movie aside um, so that we didn't just copy it because I think we felt like that would be the easy way out. And we didn't, we, we really wanted to create something new. Um, you know, for example, Ingrid could have written, if I'm a bird, you're a bird, the song, you know, which probably she would have crushed and would have been great. But we just wanted to create something different. So um, we put them aside um, to begin with, but throughout the years, throughout our geez, seven year journey of making this, we would constantly return, you know, oh, we need to watch that. We need to watch that scene from the movie because that scene is so good. And um, just remind ourselves what's there because we really do take seriously the expectations of the audience members that are coming in who love the movie. And we want to honor them and give them the delight of seeing their story on stage. So we absolutely would, would use it um, as something we could return to, to remind us of what we were trying to, to honor, you know, but we tried to sort of like keep it, keep it over there. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Um, you have to, you know, kind of start, you know, from your own foundation. Um, and yeah, and, you know, the end result has obviously um, worked out so well. One of the decisions yeah. that you make um, that I think is so interesting. Speaking of collaborating with Ingrid, is that older Allie, played by the brilliant Marianne Plunkett, um, doesn't mm -hmm. sing nearly as much as the other characters. I think it's a really yeah. fitting decision and very smart. Mm -hmm. What was the inspiration for that? How early on, on in the process did you know that we're going to hold her, you know, kind of songs um, to the end of the show? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. I, so I know in Marianne's song at the end of the show is the first song that Ingrid ever wrote for the musical um, before she even knew she had the job, just when she was sort of like kind of auditioning for, for it, essentially. Um, and I'm pretty sure that as early as her writing that song, she had this gut feeling that um, that was kind of the first time we hear her sing. And so when I came on board and started helping her craft it, I'm pretty sure we just kind of knew it in our gut that it felt like the right thing to, to build to that moment. Um, because, you know, it does kind of honor the disease that, um, the, the truth of it is, you know, you slip further and further away, but oftentimes people will have moments of great clarity right before they pass away, um, which is just devastating and stunning and all the things. Um, so again, in our attempt to, we, we're really digging into the older characters in this version and trying to honor Alzheimer's. So, so to that end, like, let's really not let her sing until the end when she re remembers who Noah is and has this incredible moment of clarity towards the end of her life. We just wanted to, to try and honor that. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of, it's a bold, I mean, it's a choice. It's a bold choice because it's a musical. And it's like, why isn't she singing? <laughs> but yeah. Marianne Plunkett is so incredible. And I like to think that she has like, so much to do, you know, she, she, um, you know, before she sings, um, and she, her own mother passed away from Alzheimer's and she's honoring her mother with her performance. So her performance is totally gut wrenching because she also witnessed it firsthand. So our hope is that it all builds to this final moment of, um, joy and discovery and clarity and remembering her life and all that. 
Yeah, it does. And I do think to your point, what is so strong about your book is you get real, like there are some serious <laughs> book scenes with some dramatic heft. I mean, we get some great yeah. moments of older Noah and, and, and Allie. And then one of my favorites, yeah. that um, bedroom scene between middle Noah and Allie where, you mm -hmm. know, they've just kind of reunited, but there's a real kind of uh, conflict there about, you know, what yeah. happened in their past and why did this fall apart? Um, I just wanted to ask you about, mm -hmm. you know, giving space in your book to let those scenes breathe because mm. you know, as you said, uh, audiences are expecting songs, but the book needs to stand on its own and you get some yeah. great two-hander scenes in this. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still learning. I mean, this is my first musical. I have another one I've been doing concurrently, but I feel like I've been in like grad school, <laughs> you know, book grad school these last seven years because it's a new skill. Um, it's not exactly playwriting. It's certainly not screenwriting. Things from playwriting and screenwriting lend themselves to this, but it's a new thing. Um, it's a constant exercise in economy um, and, and trying to be spare and saying a million things in two words. Um, more than any other writing I've done, you have to be so spare. And um, I think, uh, um, you know, uh, what was really helpful for me was working on it with Michael and Shelley, our directors who have each done a million musicals and new musicals, and just kind of listening to them and um, getting getting notes from them. We need this, we don't need this, we need this, we don't need this. And, you know, just trying to, um, protect what I feel is right and true, but also not have an ego about it and just constantly let go and, and try new things. So we, we really, you know, that was our process over the seven years was just, um, trying to keep it lean. And, um, because it, you know, it, it almost, you could call it a play with music if you wanted to. Absolutely. One could make that argument. And, because of that, I think we do give a little bit more space to these book scenes. Um, and Ingrid early on, she's always been really protective of the way in which the characters, we don't want people just like bursting into song in a traditional musical theater way. So I think because of that, we need a little bit more book to to lead us into our songs because it's not really the traditional we're singing now um and also yeah because we wanted to dig into the older characters and dig into the alzheimer's of it all um and, and that scene in particular i'm so glad you enjoyed that scene i rewrote that the middles fight scene about nine million times um and i wish i could still keep rewriting it to be honest <laughs> i would till my deathbed um but, you know, when we updated the time periods from the 30s, 40s, 90s to 60s, 70s, present day, Noah is no longer, he went from being, um, from having served in World War II to having served in Vietnam. And Vietnam was such a bit different experience from World War II. Like, I have brothers in the military and, um, and dad and grandparents, my whole military family. And um, I just have, like, absorbed over the years how how much has changed to be a soldier, even for World War II to having served in the Iraq war. And I wanted to give, make sure there was a little bit of time and space for Noah to have really truly gone through that and to come to have come home to no love and no respect and, and no work. And, and I didn't want to gloss over that. So to that end, we did have to give a little bit more space in those book scenes so that I could attempt to to honor that experience. Yeah, I'm so glad. I mean, all the all the reworking paid off, I think, um, because the the end yeah. scene is so powerful, and Ryan and Joy just perform it so well. Um, yeah, they're amazing. You mentioned earlier just how closely wedded. Um, humor and joy are with moments of pain, which is surprising. Um, and I do think that this show in particular balances that so well. I mean, there are, for as much as the audience knows they're going to, you know, come and most likely cry at, at the emotion. Yeah. Um, it's very funny. I mean, Joy has some incredibly funny moments. Marianne has yeah. some incredibly funny lines. I wanted to ask you about how important humor was to you and especially finding the right moments to include humor because I think the audience yeah. really needs it um, and you found the right, you know, places to, to place. Yeah. It. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I just kind of can't help it. I mean, that's just how I write, you know, I truly can't help it. Like I could be writing about the saddest thing and that's just where my mind and my heart go. Um, also Nick Sparks from the beginning and he was, he was, he's been lovely. I mean, he kind of gave us the rights and sort of was off doing his own thing and, um, kind of said, you know, do whatever you want. But the one thing he did say early on was like, let's try and find some humor. Um, and for me, you know, it's the notebook. It is a tearjerker. And, and, and my, my instinct from the beginning was to try and subvert that tone a little bit and, and, and kind of like let the audience roll their eyes at this love story as we all do when we see like 16 year olds canoodling on the train or in the park we're like oh my god dudes really you know like let the audience um ex you know give the audience a little bit of that lens so that there's a little bit of an escape from it I guess so that it's not just all tenderness um because the whole you know the the whole journey has been to try and not be a big part of it is try and not be sappy and and to try and undercut the tenderness with enough reality and humor that it doesn't feel saccharine um and that's a it's it's an uphill battle because the story is so devastating <laughs> um but but yeah I think over time and of course you know when you see the show there is a bit of a rhythm like devastating moment laugh devastating moment laugh you know so in that sense it's, it's certainly not rocket science but you know we are always trying to find attempting to find a, a surprising laugh you know not necessarily the laugh that you would expect like how can we kind of come at it from a different angle but I think early days I wasn't it wasn't at all like I need a joke here. I don't really, cause I'm not a joke writer. I'm not a comedy writer. So I don't really approach it that way. I was just kind of like trying to live in all the scenes and see what, see what I discovered. But certainly as we started to put it on its feet, as we were in, you know, seeing it with an audience in Chicago and feeling it there, we, I did start to develop a bit of that sense. Like we need, we need something here. Um, but, but early on, I would, I don't think there was much of a formula. It was more just me like finding my way through it. Before I let you go, uh, Becca, I have to ask you or just comment on the fact that th this is your Broadway debut. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to ask you, what does it feel like to make your Broadway debut, number one, just in general, but number two, with this show in particular that means so much to you and has such a close, you know, personal connection? What is it like yeah. to, you know, be, be on stage in New York? Oh my gosh. It's so thrilling. It's, it's, and it's so humbling and it's so terrifying. It's, it's like just to be out there. I mean, I'm back in LA with my, with my little kids, you know, so I'm sort of away, but um, just to have it, you know, we're out there every night, just hoping to connect with people. Um, but I was there January through March when we were in rehearsal and previews and um I wrote my first play 23 years ago. You know, it's it's not a short journey. Um, it's you know over ha over half over half my life. Yeah, um, I'm almost 42. I feel um, like I've worked really hard to get to this place, and I'm sort of here at the right time because I can really appreciate it. I'm really grateful for it. And I'm really just living in it and trying to, to enjoy it. And just, I, I'm so appreciative. I, I just like left um, right after the notebook opened. I had a show start rehearsal down at Playmakers, which is the rep company at UNC Chapel Hill, where I went to college, where I wrote my first play. Um, and I was there back with all my old professors and I'm just feeling so grateful for the people who said, keep going and keep writing. Um, and to be here all these years later at the biggest possible stage, you know, in, with a show in New York is just, um, it, it, it's wonderful. And, and I feel really lucky. I just feel really lucky. That's all. And it is not lost on me. <laughs> you know, I, I really feel every moment that I've lived to, to get here. And it's awesome. 
Becca Brunstetter, congratulations on the notebook. Thank you so much for Thank talking you. to me today. Thanks, David.